Welcome to Ronnie Falco, episode three. We're actually not going to be painting though, we're going to be monoprinting. So welcome to monoprinting with Ronnie Falco. We're at my home studio, so welcome. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I like to do is get water in the studio. So I have a water um, pitcher here, decanter, and go ahead and fill up a, um, a plastic uh, receptacle full of water because you're going to need this for cleaning purposes and mixing. Um, the next thing I already did to save time was um, separate out my colors. All the cold colors on the left and the warm colors on the right so I don't get confused. You also want to have a couple mediums on, um, on hand. This is a glow-in-the-dark phosphorescent medium and this is just a regular old screen printing medium. It's good for uh, helping to keep the inks uh, wet. Some people use retarder, but I don't like to use that word, so I use a medium instead. All right, um, you also want to have a spray bottle and um, paper towels handy for cleaning, an assortment of brushes, and um, a homemade mixing stick, a foam brayer, and a piece of quarter inch plexiglass with paper underneath so you don't ruin your studio table. Okay. Um, the idea of monoprinting is you make multiple editions of something that don't look remotely similar, but then you call it an edition. And then people are like, oh, you, the edition doesn't look all the same. You say, I know, because it's a monoprint or a monotype um, is what they say in Europe. So let's get started. I'm going to add a little bit of my medium directly to, you can use acrylic paint or screen printing ink. I only use water-based um, materials because safety is no accident and I don't want um, unnecessary fumes in the studio by my fireplace because it could ignite a fire. Okay, go ahead and mix this really well, vigorously. It should be frothy and it won't change the color. Like I said, it'll just keep it from drying out on you. Okay, once we get started, we can't stop. So we need to start. There's not a whole lot of room for changing things, which is kind of the beauty of monoprinting. So again, kind of have them have your inks laid out in the order which you're going to use them, because the more the ink dries, the less it will transfer in the in the process. I'll, I also forgot to show you, I'm going to be using paper. So I have a stack of paper here, a stack of paper that um, I'll be using to print. Okay, here we go. Also remember that you're printing backwards. So if you're using text, you have to write the text backwards. Uh, when you're monoprinting, you want to keep the paint thick and juicy, but not um, not overly, uh, not an excess amount of paint, because that will just, it'll blur, and it'll, it'll smear out, and it'll blob. So I don't really want that. I just want a thick amount of paint to transfer. Okay, so I'm painting it on. It's nice to use a thick sable brush like this, because as I smear the paint, onto the plexi, wherever the brush strokes happen, those will actually be preserved and it'll show the texture when I pull the print. Okay, I'm using a similar color but lighter. So a grass green on top of a um, turtle green. I'm going to come in with some white. So with the white, you can't really mix it too much, otherwise it'll just turn into light green. So you need to kind of come correct the first time and then back off. All right, next in line is black for the eyeballs. So I go ahead and paint the eyeballs in. Again, not too juicy, otherwise it'll just turn into a gray mess. Um, I, I don't want to ruin the surprise, but I think I need to say this. I'm doing the nostrils of the snake. So you probably already knew it was a snake. Okay, keep going. Actually, I got my colors wrong. I want to use pink, not orange, for the smile. Always have a pink smile. Um, it's less intimidating when people look at the, uh, the snake in your artwork. Something that could be considered scary and off-putting becomes something playful. Okay, now I'm drawing a skull because the snake is a constrictor and it's choking the life out of the skull. But it's kind of ironic the skull's already dead. 
Okay, so I get in here expressively with the white for the skull, like that. All right, done with the white, put the white back over here. Starting to get a little confused. I'm starting to go back and forth a little bit, so bear with me. Okay, I'm missing a brush. It's no problem, I have an extra one right here. I'm using brown that I'm painting into the skull. Um, I don't know if you've ever picked it, you ever, if ever, anyone's ever seen a dead body, but it's always a little bit, it's never white. It's always like off-white and brown. So you want to mix some of that in for texture. I'm going to hop back over here to the black. I'm starting to get a little confused. And I'm going to draw the eyes of the skull. And I think on the skull I'm going to use a black for the, uh, for the mouth. All right, kind of messed up a little. There's a little room for error if you want to go in carefully and blot things out and blend a little bit. Sometimes I cheat a little bit too in the end and actually do a little hand painting before I post it to a social media site. Don't tell anybody. All right, I'm short one brush again. I'm gonna grab this one. So we got the snake, we got the skull. Next, obviously, will be a basketball. So the snake is um, spinning the basketball on its tail. And while he's staring at the basketball, and the skull is looking forward to create more tension in the, uh, the picture. I did some Google image searching of the basketball before I started, so I know it's a little, little line, line, and as always in a cartoon drawing, you need a couple action lines. So have fun with it. People like action lines. All right, I'm still moving quickly. All the paint should be nice and juicy and wet, ready to go. So I grab a piece of, uh-oh. I'm still in here. Here we go. Grab a piece of paper. I want to apply a firm pressure. I have to lay it down correctly, I don't want to move it. And then at this point I can use a foam brayer, or I prefer a really hands-on, more massage technique, where I actually rub the, the, the back of the paper like a woman. So I get in with both hands, and just kind of work it like a massage, using my fingertips. I don't really do that, that's just for the camera. But get in there with my fingertips, now I'm ready to peel it. Voila, you have a fresh monoprint. You wanna put this on a drying rack and let it dry. Um, another, another good tip is to add matte medium into the ink so it's nice and matte consistency and not shiny so it matches the paper. We got a little bit of uh, water on this, but it'll dry. Might buckle a little bit. And don't forget to sign your prints. So a monoprint, you can only sign it and do one of one. But um, if you want, you can just repeat and then keep making fun monoprints. All right, Roddy, we're at uh, eight over eight minutes. It's pretty good. It's good. All right, Roddy, thank you. All right, thanks for watching monoprinting with Ronnie Falco in the home studio. I'll see you next time, episode four.